There is currently 21 different heroes in Blue and Sea Battles 2, guys, and with every single hero giving you different benefits, drawbacks, different prices, different heroing levels, it can be pretty hard to know which hero to use and which heroes are the best in certain cases. So today, I'm going to try to help clear the air for you guys a little bit by showcasing the best three current heroes in Blue and Sea Battles 2 and the best loadouts to use with them. So let's hop right into it. Let's get it, guys. And also, if this tutorial helps you out at any point, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing. It takes two seconds and go a long way from you guys. I'm trying to hit 50,000 subscribers before the summertime and only you can help me get there. So let's hop right into it. All right, guys, the first hero I wanted to showcase is Fate Weaver Dora, which I am going to be using today and my opponents will be using it as well. We're against Withmere, who's a really good player. And we are on the map off tie today with the strategy Ninja Alchemist and Farm here. So here we go. Now, the reason why Fate Weaver Dora is probably honestly the best hero in the game right now, I would say it's very, very strong is because it's really strong defensively and the level three and level 10 abilities, the abilities from it are extremely effective. So you'll definitely see that being utilized in today's match. Now it looks like my opponent's going tax trader, which is pretty interesting. I'm bringing a strategy of Ninja Alchemist and farm here, which is definitely one of the meta, if not the current meta loadout um, in the game. So let's start with my Adora, my Fate Weaver Adora and my um, Alchemist here. You always want to be getting Fate Weaver Adora round one, guys. Well, actually, Scratch that. You can sometimes get Fate Weaver Door round two. Typically, though, it's best to get round one, but it's not the end of the world if you get round two. But, um, yeah, some of the other heroes you'll see that. Well, actually, I think all three heroes I'm showcasing today, it's good to get them early, but some heroes, it's not a bad idea to get them a little bit later. But Fate Weaver Door round one or round two is what you pretty much always want to do there. All right, we'll send him a couple spaced yellows. Let's get a ninja down right here and close. How is this going to do against this? Upgrade the ninja once. How is this doing against yellow balloons here? Okay, it's doing all right. It's doing all right. Let's get my um first farm down here in a second. Okay, we got our farm down. Perfect. Let's get a banana farmer and a balloon bot next to it. And then we'll upgrade the ninja again to sharp shurikens. All right, seems like this is doing decent defensively. I actually don't have seeking shuriken yet, but my ninja's doing a pretty good job without seeking shuriken because I just have a close targeting. So it's kind of shooting in a line here. It was kind of my... um thought process with it so seems like we're it's getting its job done at the moment you know it's getting its job done all right upgrade the farm we're gonna upgrade this a little bit put this on first and we're gonna use the level three ability when this comes available come on perfect and we're gonna upgrade this to larger potions all right how is this gonna handle white balloons does my current defense handle white balloons or do i need to get up more stuff that's the question of the day Right now, it seems like we're doing decent. I'm leaking a tiny bit, but nothing substantial. So I don't think I'll need double shot here. Fate Weaver Door is doing a decent amount of damage for us. And the nice part is starting round seven, I'm going to get level four Fate Weaver Door, which doubles Fate Weaver's damage or doubles its popping power because it'll throw two conjured weapons at once instead of one conjured weapon. So starting round seven, I should be doing even better against these um white balloons and things they're sending me. But right now, it's looking a little bit suspect. Not gonna lie. Okay, we're fine. I have the level three ability available if I get scared. Let's get double shot up. We're chilling. Greater production. All right, good start for us so far. Good start for us, ladies and gentlemen. But yeah, this my opponent's gonna have to play aggressive into me in this match because we have a late game advantage with our loadout. Even though we both have Fate Weaver Door, we have the same hero. They're going Tack Mortar, I'm going Ninja Alchemist. And Ninja Alchemist does in fact outlast tack mortar so they will need to play aggro to be able to win the match okay one more eco boost i afford my elk buff first last elk buff has been bought what wait did i just sell my farm by accident what happened there i guess i did oh well Okay, we boost that. That's fine. That's fine with me. Okay, he's probably going to re-rush me around 13, my guess is. So let's get an alchemist in the front here. All 
Alright, this should defend. Yep, that defends. That's what I'm talking about, bro. That's what I'm talking about. Let's go. They go into an all-out round 13. I just get a simple defend with the Shinobis and the Blunjitsu. Okay. Since that game was really quick, guys, and I didn't really get to showcase Fate Weaver to that well of a um, standard, I'll start another game with Fate Weaver just starting on like round 13 where that game cut off. So let's get it. All right. Next match with Fate Weaver door, guys. We are on the map of Precious Space with the strategy Bomb, Submarine, and Farm. We're against Bomb, Sub, Farm as well. So we're actually both going the same Lota here, which I thought was pretty interesting. And um, yeah, this should be a really fun one here. I'm excited for it. Crazy and start from both of us. He actually did not force me to upgrade my bomb shooter, which is nice. We're gonna go for a plantation here. We're actually gonna go double plantation. We're gonna remove the obstacle and go for a second one, believe it or not. Be big greed play coming out. And then if they rush me around 11, I will go for a cluster bomb on my side. So let's see if they do. Currently they aren't. So we're gonna cross path my plant. All right. We'll cross path the other plant. Perfect. All right, good start for us, ladies and gentlemen. We'll buy a um, we'll buy a submerge on our side. Still no rush for my opponent. My opponent has sent anything in a bit here, so I think it's decently likely. Oh, they actually just go for a reactor on their side. That's fine. Okay. I was, I was gonna say it's decently likely they're gonna rush me, but it doesn't look like it. Now, guys, actually, thing we should note here: our fate weaver spot might seem a little bit weird because it only can hit the balloons towards the back end of the map. The reason we placed our fate weaver Adora in this specific spot here guys is because of the fate weaver door level 7 ability eye of misfortune i'll be kind of showcasing this ability later in today's video this is one of fate weaver's strongest um attributes here basically the way it works is it, um when you use the ability you can sacrifice one of your towers on the screen and then this in turn will speed up your balloons around the enemy hero so to counter it, you can kind of place your hero in obscure spots so then the speed up is not around an important spot of the map if that makes sense which is what we did. Put us on first real quick. Let's try to get my reactor up. Just because balloons are starting to push a little bit. But I think we're in a pretty good spot overall. We've got my opponent out farmed for sure. We've got two plantations in our marketplace on our side. So our farms are looking nice today. Nice, nice. Can I fit the third sub? I can. Okay, perfect. So I can fit two submarines and my bomb shooter here. Which is nice as well. Which we'll pre-place the sub. But yeah, I might plan on sending them like some sort of mob brush. With this level 7 Eye of Misfortune, which can be really, really dangerous to the opponent. Well, actually, maybe I shouldn't, because look at this. They actually have the same Fate Weaver spot as me. So, if I did the level 7 ability towards them, it wouldn't be super effective as well. Because they also place their Fate Weaver in an anti-level 7 spot. That is interesting. Okay. So far, nothing. They actually just pre buy a Ballistic Missile on their side. That's fine. If they send me a fortified mob, I'm probably just going to go for a mob assassin on my end, will be the plan. Can I fit a farm here? Did my bomb shooter spot take up the farm spot? I think I, I think I should place my bomb a little bit more on the right. Now that I, you know, they're going to send me a fortified mob? They might. They stopped ecoing? Nope, they aren't. Alright. Can I fit a bomb shooter in here? I swear I saw a spot for it earlier. But I can't find it. But yeah, Fate Weaver has three abilities because it gets another ability in level 10. The level 10 ability, guys, I'm just saying right now, it's pretty insane. It, uh, it's called the Chains of Fate. It can destroy huge rushes for you. It uh, can beat DDTs. It's really good. Okay, we got second bomb shooter down. That's good. So I airburst starts on that. This is on strong. 2000 eco here, solid. I think I'm going to try to get a banana research facility for around. Put this on first. BRF. Buy a ballistic missile on our side now. Let's get a bigger bombs in the back. This should defend. Yeah, we're good. Okay. We'll keep ecoing. I like our spot so far. Let's actually send them a fortified BFB here. I think a fortified BFB is not a bad rush. Because they won't have their chains of fate yet, right? They no shot they have their chains of fate yet. Yeah, we forced a mauler on their side. I might use the level 7 ability. I don't think the level 7 ability will speed boost the BFB, though. I'll, sh I'll show you what it does, though. I'll show you the effect. So if I use it, you can click something to sacrifice. If I sacrifice it, there's a little icon that goes around the enemy hero. It only did it for a split second, if you saw, because I sacrificed something really cheap. If you sacrifice something more expensive, the um, speed, the effect lasts a lot longer. So that's kind of the way it works there. But, yeah. Hope that's a... I think that was a decent explanation of it. A decent explanation of it. Ladies and gentlemen. Okay, ceramics. I should be pretty solid against these. Let's use level 3 ability from Fate Weaver Adora. Yeah, we're good. We're stopping at 2500 eco. 
They're actually sending me a couple BFBs. Okay. We're going for two Maulers here to damage them a little bit. And then I'm going to use my Chains of Fate. Watch this. Watch this. Watch how Chains of Fate works. Chains of Fate just grabs everything and solos the entire rush. Isn't that crazy? Now, that was only normal BFBs. They weren't very healthy, but it still should be noted. Like, Chains of Fate is an incredibly strong upgrade. Okay, they're sending me a couple fortified BFBs here. Actually, let's just... Against this, let's just use a let's just use a um bomb blitz. I think is gonna be the plan. We'll just bomb blitz this chat. Bomb blitz will solo this rush. Perfect. I should be able to get my banana. Do I go for banana central at this point, or do I just go for monkey Wall Street? I was planning on going straight for banana central, but they rushed me a bunch, which kind of switched up my tactics here. Let's just go for monkey Wall Street. Because I can keep a bunch of farms left over while getting the Monkey Wall Street up. So I don't think this is a bad idea at all. And we also have our Chains of Fate back, which can defend DTs. Yeah, look at this. Going for the Monkey Wall Street, safe play. And I've still got my opponent out farm pretty heavily. Especially because they sent me all of those BFBs, which I don't think was very wise from them. Because the Chains of Fate and the Bomb Blitz are extremely good against that type of stuff. We're just getting a couple more on our side just to play it safe. Let's get let's get the 2500 Eco here. Just because I want to have a, I wanna have a um, round number. No way! Uh oh. We're at 2499. I messed it up. I thought I thought we'd get to exactly 2500, but the decimals didn't line up correct in our manner. ZOMG, okay. Multiple Z what is this rush? I've gotta say. This is an interesting one. Alright, let's just go for Balloon Crush, in all honesty. I don't know what this rush is, but I'm not going to play games about against it. We'll just Balloon Crush it. Bro hits me with the too cute emote. He just sold the big island. There's semi ceramics. Let's use Chains of Fate. Chains of Fate sold ceramics. Chains of Fate sold ceramics. Look at the door pops. 50,000 pops. If anything gets through, I'm going to go for a Bomb Blitz on my side. I think Balloon Crush just solos it, though. Balloon Crush is so strong. Let's use level 3 adorability. Level 3 adorability actually just got an insane amount of pops, too. Dude, Adora is broken. They're sending me more ceramics. I think I'm good against them. They did not get past. Yeah, they're dead against the eye. GG's. Okay. Alright, there's two games showcasing Fate Weaver Door. I think that was a decent showcase. The only thing I didn't get to really showcase was the level 7 ability. But it's strong. Just let me just let me tell you, it's it's pretty strong there. But now on to the next hero. Let's get it, guys. Alright, guys, our next match of today's video and our next hero I wanted to showcase is actually Gwendolyn, believe it or not. Gwendolyn is an excellent hero here for a couple of reasons, which I'm gonna go over. But uh, we're gonna start with our Gwendolyn right here. We're going the strategy of Ninja Alchemist and Heli with Gwendolyn. They're starting with their uh Alchemist right there, fair enough. But yeah, Gwendolyn in comparison to Fate Weaver Dora, what's the advantages, what's the disadvantages? Well, one of the main advantages of Gwendolyn, guys, is that Gwendolyn actually buffs your towers quite a bit, actually. Gwendolyn can apply pierce buffs and damage buffs to your towers, which pair really well with the ninja, because the ninja lacks pierce and lacks damage, so those will be very helpful. And also, Gwendolyn pops a decent amount of balloons on its own, too. It's got some pretty strong um, attacks. It's got a burn effect you can apply later. It's got a lot of strong abilities with it, so you'll see that here today, but... Start with like wouldn't start with my ninja, and I also want to get my alchemist here pretty soon. Now I don't I, I want my alchemist to, be able to buff my ninja, but not my Gwendolyn. So this should be this placement should be pretty good for my alchemist right here. I think these should be pretty solid placements for all three. You've got my Gwendolyn buffing my ninja. We've got my alchemist buffing my ninja, but my alchemist is not buffing my Gwendolyn, and that's exactly kind of the trio of buffage we want here, guys. Points going on. Points honestly probably going the exact same loadout as me, I would guess. They're going Ninja Alchemist, um, they have Fate Weaver Dora, and I'm guessing they're bringing Heli as well. Now, this actually be really interesting, guys, because if we both have the same exact loadout here, I'm pretty sure I'm at a big late game advantage with Gwendolyn, since Gwendolyn will buff my uh, Ninja's damage late game, which makes a huge difference. While Fate Weaver Dora, even though it has the really strong Chains of Fate and stuff, they've got no tower buffs they'll be, um, they've got no tower buffs they'll be getting late game, or no, yeah, no buffage action, so... 
I think I'm at an advantage with Gwen here. I do think so. But in the meantime, we'll just continue max eco on, because why the heck not? Why the heck not? Uh, what's our defense going to look like here? What's the best route of defense for me to take against some of these balloons? Maybe go for a stronger asset on this. And then we'll probably build it into a larger potions as well. I think this setup will probably defend pretty well for us. It should be pretty good. Yeah, this is buffing my ninja. You can see that there's a little Gwendolyn icon. On, that means my ninja has plus one pierce from the Gwendolyn. So instead of hitting um five balloons with every shuriken, it's now hitting six when the pierce buff is active. Which I think it has about 70% uptime if the Gwendolyn's attacking. So it's pretty solid uptime overall. 70% I'll take it. I'll definitely take it. Um, they are probably going to send me yellows next round, so I'm actually going to target my cocktail right here. The cocktail can be really useful for defending big groups of eco early game, so I shouldn't have to build up any extra defense against yellow balloons here if I use my cocktail at a good time. Let's use cocktail. I leak a little bit, but that's fine. I have life rejuvenation with the heli. Yeah, we're totally good against all that. We're totally good against all that. They have a second alchemist on their side. Fair enough. 750 eco. I am going to need a double shot here pretty soon, though, because these will eventually overrun me for sure. So let's, let's get the double shot up. Perfect. And we'll send them some Zebra Balloon eco. Just continue maximizing my economy here is going to be the name of the game. I can Zebra Balloon eco on our end. I think I'm good with my current setup. The Gwendolyn on round um, 9 allows it to apply a burn effect on the target balloon. So you'll see lots of these balloons actually have acidic effect from my alchemist and burn effect from my Gwendolyn. So they're getting double damage over time to there, which is pretty effective overall. So I love to see that. Are they going to rush me? Doesn't look like it currently. Okay. If they did. I get an alk buff up. Faster throwing on this guy. They do the same. They get lead to gold on their side. That's fine. Let's get large potions on this. I'm not going to buy my Alk buff yet. I think I'm going to... Can I defend these rainbows? Let's just use Cocteau. Let's just use Cocteau here. They have their Alk buff up, but I kind of want to hold off on buying my Alk buff just so then I can easily afford my rubber to gold. Now, obviously, if they rush me, I'll need to purchase the Alk buff. That's just a given, but if they don't rush me, I'd like to just get a quicker route to the rubber to gold, if that makes sense. Yeah, they get their rubber to gold up nicely done. I'll do mine as well. Still do not have the Alk buff on my side. Also, I'm sending black. I, want, I don't want to send black balloons into the rubber duel. That's not a very wise decision here. So let's just switch off that. Oh, I accidentally bought a Sipy Mixture Dip on my Alchemist. Well, my my Gwendolyn's getting getting a Sipy Mixture Dip applied to it now. Okay, that was a that was a misplay. Yeah, if they rush me, I'll just buy a Berserker Brew during the rush. And then if it's a big rush, I'll just boost against it. I'm fine boosting. Boosting's not really a problem for me. I can defend rerushes by selling my rubber to gold and building up more defense, so. Yeah. He's hitting me with the good luck. I'll hit him with the hearts. They're giving me the hearts back. Alright. I see you. Now, if they don't send me anything and don't force my berserk. Do I need berserker brew against this? There's a couple AI purples. No, I'm good. If they don't force my berserker brew out, I might go for a second rubber to gold. I might just do it. Second rubber to gold is not a terrible decision here. Because they will be sending me constant eco throughout the entire game, so. I'll get good value on it. Let's use Cocktail here, because there's some strong AI balloons in round 17. Yeah, it's kind of crazy not even having an elk buff up in round 17. But, I mean, if my opponent's not going to rush me, there's no point to build it up, you know? It's like, uh, he's letting me greed, so. I'll greed. That's just in my nature. Get stuck in rubber to gold up, perfect. It's in my nature, bro. I think I'll end it at three rubber to golds. Three rubber to golds should be quite effective. If I have them all thrown at different times as well, I should be able to coat most of the pink balloons they're sending with three rubber to golds. Because I want to wait till this one throws, that one throws, and then this one throws. Yep, we have them all throwing at different times now, which is important. Because you don't want them hitting the same exact balloon. We'll place a heli on the, all the way in the bottom left of the map. Get a downdraft on this. Let's try to blow back the ceramics, see if rubber gold can hit the ceramics. Okay, I think we coded a little bit of them, not a ton of them, but I'll take it. Anything's better than nothing, you know what I mean? And let's get my support Chinook up here. Perfect. You'd love to see that. Still do not have a balloon jitsu on my end, by the way. My opponent does have a balloon jitsu on their end, so... I have been greeting this game very effectively, I think. 
very, very effectively. Let's start collecting these crates. Go for another one here. Perfect. Honestly, I'm considering sending them purple blue Nico. It seems it sounds like a weird decision sending them purple blue Nico because they do have rubber golds in there on their end. But this game is gonna go late. We just both have a late game loadout. And if the game's going super late, I think purple blue Nico is worth. So I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. It seems really odd, I know. Seems weird, seems funky, seems funky, but I think it's a smart decision here. It's gonna start overwhelming them, so they're gonna need to get more defense as well. But yeah, they will make substantial money off my purple blue Nico, but I still think it's gonna be worth the eco I'll make from it. Okay, we forced flash bomb on their side, I'll take that. They're sending me purple blue Nico as well. Let's go for some shinobi buffs on my ninja. Two shinobi buffs should be enough. And we're also gonna go for a fourth rubber to gold since they're sending me purples. Since they're sending me purples, a fourth rubber to gold is definitely a smart investment. So they're just copying me, it looks like, which is fair. Learn from the best, you know what I'm saying? Not cocky, not cocky. All right, let's get another heli down right here. I might as well go for a fifth rubber to gold, as weird as that might sound. Just because purple balloons feed the rubber gold so much, I want to be ma maximizing my money from them. Okay, round 25. Let's get the support Chinook up. I've got almost 5k eco here, so this is really good. We'll keep placing these helis in the best manner possible to maximize their placements. All right. Another one. Another one. They're starting to get overwhelmed by my purple eco a little bit. Okay, they got a sticky bomb on their side. That's fine. I honestly should set lock these in place. I haven't done this before. I haven't done this yet, but locking these in place by the rubber to gold can be really nice because it'll cycle, it'll blow back a lot of the balloons back into the rubber to gold's radius to just to make more rubber to gold money. And it kind of gets my helis out of the way too. The helis can be kind of annoying blocking your uh, view of stuff. So let's just do that. Let's just do that there. Okay, if he sends me a round 28 rush, I can firestorm it, I can get up a master bomber, I've got some options. Sending them a round 28 rush would not be wise either, because they have Fate Weaver Door, so they have that Chains of Fate, which I showcased earlier, which is extremely strong against DDTs or ceramics. Definitely got more helis on the field than them. I think I'm in a much better economic spot than them, for sure, here. Move my farmer and my balloon bot kind of out of the way, just in the bottom right corner. Let's move my alchemist. Oh wait, I actually don't want to move the alchemist because this. I'm just gonna sell this. Let's go for an alk uh, perma brew right here. Perfect. In case they send me around 30 BAD, around 30 fortified BAD. I don't think they will, but you never know these days. So might as well play it safe and get the perma brew up. I have the money for it. So one of the strongest parts about the um about Gwendolyn here, guys, which I haven't really talked much about Gwendolyn. I've been too focused on the game is level 17 Gwendolyn. We're not there yet. You can see it here. Heat it up empowers affected monkeys to pop one extra layer and do plus two damage to lead balloons. So basically, whenever Gwendolyn's attacking, it'll be buffing all the towers in its range with plus one damage, which is very, very effective, obviously, to ninjas, which have... My ninjas have three damage when they're buffed by Permabru. So it'll be making them three damage to four damage. And then on top of that, if I use the Gwendolyn Firestorm as well, the ninjas will be de dealing five damage. So the uh, Gwendolyn in effect can make my ninjas deal five damage instead of three damage, um, which is a 66% buff to their total DPS, which is pretty crazy when you think about it, right? So that's why I think I've got a late game advantage on my opponent here. If we both are playing, like if we both build up our defense in the same manner and both build our defense efficiently, I think I'll be at a huge advantage with Gwendolyn over Fate Weaver Door here. So, I like, I like our positioning. Let's also upgrade one of these to special operations just because it makes more money per crate. I think I'm done sending purple blue Nico at this point. We're just going to send pinks again because we're getting kind of into later game rounds. I don't think purple blue Nico is worth anymore, economically speaking. The economics of it are not worth, chat. Okay, we'll get our master bomber in the back here. So I'll actually move my Gwendolyn right here. This should be in a good spot to buff a bunch of my ninjas. I'm actually going to sell some of these heli farms at the top just to start to build up my ninja army. I need to make sure I've got a pretty solid structure of defense. How many stacks these guys have? 10 on some of them, not 10 on a lot of them. Okay. Another one right there. 
Now, we want the Blunjitsus on strong, believe it or not. A decent amount of them on strong. Let's actually move my... Is my perm brew perm brewed everything here? I think so. Let's move my perm brew right here now. And what am I going to put in the gap? Let's actually put Gwendolyn in the gap that my perm brew left. Let's put Gwendolyn there. Bit of ninja right here. Let's collect all the crates. 10 on most of these. Okay, pretty much all of these have 10. We'll go for a grandmaster on one of these in the middle. Maybe I shouldn't have locked my helis in place over the track. I should have done it where they have their helis in place. Because my helis are kind of blocking a lot of the stuff I'd like to where I'd place ninjas. Um, okay. All of these are buffed. Let's move my thing. Almost 12,500 eco. My eco is pretty solid here. Around, around 38. We're, our plan to rush will probably be... Mid round 40s is when the rushes will be sent normally with this loadout. The mid round 40s. Do all of these have perma brew. Yeah, we can actually fit something there. Let's go for a unstable concoction here. Fit something there. Let me think here logically. I gotta do some thinking. Where do I wanna have my total transformation this game? My total transformation spot is super important to have it in a good location. Send me your location. Let's, let's move all of these because these are in the way. I don't like where I put my helis. Okay, let's put total transformation in the top right here, believe it or not. And I'll tell you the reasoning in a second. So we'll want five shinobis to be transformed from total transformation. Can I fit the ninja there? I just had a ninja there, bro. There we go. Total transformation is going to go right here. And the reason behind it is it's going to transform all five of these. And these guys will pierce through the entire map on first. So it'll be maximizing its damage with the pierce. And that's going to be really, really important for me here. Does it have all these perma brood? It does. Okay. I need to start. I need to start actually perma brewing a map of ninjas now. I'm kind of late on my defense, I'll be honest, but it's fine. My opponent has less defense than me, though, currently, Bill. They don't have any ninjas at the bottom. So, I might be kind of late to it, but I'm still in a fine spot in comparison. I'm going to stop my eco at 15k, by the way. 15k will be the eco amount I go for. Okay, all of these don't have perm brew yet. Yeah, it takes the nin it takes the perm brew a while to apply everything, which is why I should have been managing my time a little bit better this game. But it's fine. Yeah, we actually passed 15k eco. We'll stop right there. I got caught up. I got caught up in the hype. We have over $1 million, by the way. Our money is great here. We'll be able to send them a ton of VADs. Honestly, I think I just send them pretty soon. I, I'm running out of time to perm brew everything, so I'm just going to go for helis. Because helis can be perm brewed quickly. But it's definitely at the point of the game where I should be rushing them, I think. Especially with the amount of money we have. There's no way they're going to defend... 30 plus BADs, I'm pretty sure. Let's actually move my perm brew one time. Here. Let's click fortified. Follow mouse. Yeah, there's no shot that we'll defend at this point. Round 47. Let's go for a couple unstable concoctions down here. Okay, we're good. And we're going to send them. I'm going to hit them with the... I'm going to with the hearts, and I'm going to send them. Are they countering? Or are they going for defend? There's no shot they defend, so they've got to counter me, right? Is he really not going to counter me? You're not defending, buddy. I hope you know that. It's not even going to be close. They use Chains of Fate. Chains of Fate will do a lot for them, but it won't do enough.
Oh, I really wish they countered me, dude. So I could showcase Gwendolyn a little bit better, but they aren't. Let's just use all my abilities here just to show showcase how fast the ZMGs die. But, yeah. Dang it, bro. Oh, well. They're so dead, by the way. They can pop a couple of them down, but it's... Yeah. It's Jover for my opponent. I can sell off some defense and send even more. Now they're sending me. You're late to the party, bro. Oh. Maybe they didn't want to send because they knew Gwendolyn would like actually do damage against him. I'm not sure. All right, guys. Our next match of today's video showcasing the third and final hero is indeed Star Captain Jericho. This is the most aggressive hero in Bloons Two Battles 2. You'll be stealing money from your opponent. You'll be sending starship rushes at them. You'll be adjusting the eye balloons. It just makes it really difficult for your opponent if you bring Star Captain here. So I'll show you how to use it. Uh, most of the time with this hero, you want to be bringing more aggressive loadouts. So Tack Mortar Farm is indeed one of the aggressive loadouts. So we're going to start with our Tack and our Star Captain Jericho right here. Perfect. Opponents go and Tack and Adora, which honestly is pretty interesting. So we'll have to wait and see what um what they're cooking with over here. We're going to have to wait and see what they're what they're in the kitchen with. But let's upgrade my Tack shirt a little bit. Send him some spaced greens here. And actually, we'll just keep Max Econ. We'll keep this on strong so it hits those blue balloons. Yeah. The way Star Captain attacks is it does one layer of damage per attack, but it also applies a laser shock effect on the balloons it hits. So the laser shock does another damage. So it does two damage, including the laser shock per attack. Uh, blue balloons, look at even faster firing against this. That should be enough against their blues with my star captain to clean up. All right, they're sending me yellows. I think I'm good against this. Yep. One more eco boost and I can get my first farm down. You typically want to bring Star Captain Jericho with farm loadouts since you will be playing aggressive towards your opponent. Farm allows you to fund your aggression pretty well, so most of the time I wouldn't recommend going economy loadouts with Star Captain Jericho here. Alright, we'll get increased production on this pretty soon. Perfect. Let's also steal from them. Send them some blue red balloons with the steel and then pinks. So the way the steel works, guys, is it's kind of complicated. Um up to 25 balloons sent to your opponent in the next 6 seconds will be rigged with a high-tech booby trap. Popping them earns you $7 and puts your opponent into debt. So basically, you, during the steal duration, um, which is 6 seconds long, you want to make sure you send your opponent 25 total balloons. And if you do it correctly, you'll steal $175. So basically, my opponent lost $175 from that steal, and I gained $175 from that steal. So it was a $350 money swing in total. I think this ability comes every like 70 seconds or so is the cooldown on it. But later it gets a little bit more complicated um, because you can send different up different balloons to increase your steal amount. Like send rainbows will steal more than sending like black balloons. So I'll kind of explain that more later. But um the first the first two steals, you can just send whatever balloons you want for the most part. You just want to make sure you're sending a total of 25 in that six second time period. Alright, round seven. They're sending me yells to get a mortar down on our end. This should be enough to defend yellows, guys. They're stealing again. So just to, just to always get the maximum steal, if you're sending Space Blue Nico, you just send one set of grouped reds with the Space Blue Nico. And that'll be a total of 25 balloons sent with the steal. And you can see, after they pop all of the stolen balloons, I am at seven, 350 total stolen dollars. So I have maximized my two steals effectively. All right. Round eight. We got the Camel Balloon AI coming out towards my opponent. They have Sniper Monkey, so that's what they're going to use against the Camel Balloons, it appears. We'll just keep farming on my end, because why not? Why not? Why not? Uh, if they send me some, like, region zebras or something, I'll upgrade my mortar. The moment, though, it does not appear... Oh, nope. There's some zebras. Let's upgrade this to Bloom Buster. Should be good enough against the zebras, I think. Yes, this is, this is dealing with them pretty decently. We're just going to keep on being... Okay, let's actually target the more. Let's get a second mortar down. Right here. Or any stuff on that. Let's send them a little bit of a rush just because their defense seems pretty weak at the moment. Okay, we forced a Maelstrom on their side. I'll take that. We'll get signal from our side. So now is where Jericho changes again, guys. Level 6 Jericho makes in it for the money give you more cash. And when you use it now, you want me to send in rainbows. So we'll use it round 12. We'll send rainbows. But we can't send 25 rainbows in time. So we'll send one set of purples, one set of zebras, just to make sure we get the 25 in it for the money um, balloons in there. And look at this now, guys. That steal was worth a lot more in total. Comparatively to the other steals. 
But now, um, so the next time I'll use it, I actually don't have to mix in uh, purples and zebras because now we have grouped rainbow send. If you're using the steel in round 12, though, you need to mix in some purples and zebras just because you don't have grouped rainbows yet. So the rainbows don't send fast enough for the 25 balloons to come out in time. But now we're good. Now we're good. All right, we'll keep it going here. Oh, we're sinking a little bit. Opponent's connection was a little bit um doo-doo there. Are we back or did they DC? Oh, there's a chance they DC. They're not sending me any balloons. That'd be very unfortunate. Oh, we're sinking again. Round 16 here. Okay, no, they're back. They're back. They upgrade their sniper to the sniper farm and stuff. Nicely done. Next steal comes around. So now on this steal, I'm actually going to send 25 balloons. So I'm going to send one, two, three, four, five, six sets of rainbows. And then just one set of another balloon because you just need one more balloon with the steal. And there's 25 balloons for the maximum steal, guys. And you can see I've already stolen... $1,647 worth of money on round 16. So the steals add up fairly quickly here. It's it's really, really strong. But again, this lag is actually going to be very frustrating for me because I can't really target my mortar in a good manner when my opponent's on one bar. So hopefully that does not cost me the game. You can see like my mortar targeting is very laggy. That's frustrating. Oh, well, we're going to get up a marketplace on my side here pretty soon. They're actually starting to struggle against the AI balloons. Yeah, Jericho AI can be a big problem. And their only things that could camo on their side right now is their snipers. They end up tower boosting against... Okay, I am going to send them... It's actually not send them yet. Because if I send a Moab class... If I send a Moab with the steel, the, the Moab will actually be a $300 steal from me. So I'm going to wait. And then I'm going to send them a fortified Moab with the steel here. And I'll send six rainbows behind, and there'll be a total of 25 balloons. One, two, three, four, five, six sets of rainbows. You can see how the mob has the little dollar signs on it. Okay, they're gonna need to do something against this. Oh, yeah, my opponent's connect my opponent's got some connection issues, bro. Bro's playing literally while he's getting his happy meal for McDonald's. He's on McDonald's Wi-Fi right now. I think they're dead against this Moab. Oh, they clutch up. Nicely done. Okay, that was actually really close. But you can see with that, now I'm at 2398 stolen. The Moab steal is going to be pretty effective. For sure. Okay, ceramics coming out. We're good. So now, believe it or not, my Jericho leveled up. So you can see uh, Moab class wounds sent with in it for the money are now worth $600 when popped. Which means, if you actually do the math, guys, you might think, well, Moab class, a Moab sent costs $1,000 to send. If it gives you $600 when popped... That's not worth it, right? You're only getting, you're losing $400. Contrary to your belief, that's actually wrong because your opponent's also losing $600. So it's effectively a $1,200 swing in money for a $1,000 send. So when you have this available, you pretty much always want to be sending the mob with the steel. So now I'll be sending the mob and six sets of rainbows. Even if it's not forcing uh, defense on my opponent's side, it's still worth to send the mob. Wait, why is the mob not money-fied? Is it going to give me the money? I'm at 3k soul. Let's see if it gives me the money. Um, it did. Okay. Yeah. 3,600 stolen. Bro, this sinking is actually absurd. I don't know if I've had games where I sink this much before. This is actually crazy. All right. We're back again. For the 20th time. Targeting my mortar is also a very, very difficult task here. We're going to go to like 2k eco, I think, will be my plan. Economy-wise. 2k should be a fair stopping point. 2001. My birth year, ladies and gentlemen. The year a legend was born. And it just keeps on giving you more money as Jericho levels up for the uh, for the mob class balloon with the steel. You can see level 11 gives me 1,300 when popped. Also, okay, they're sending me that. Okay, this should be enough to defend on boost. I honestly don't probably need the Maelstrom. Nope. I do need the Maelstrom, but all of my abilities lagged 10 seconds, so I'm dead. That's great. Great game. Great game. You know, you love it. You love to see it. I should have just used my abilities, I guess, five seconds before I actually needed to, but... um. 
All right. Well, that was kind of an unfortunate way for the video to end off, but I still think it was a pretty good way to showcase Star Captain Jericho's steal and adjustment throughout the match. So let me know in the comment section down below which of the three heroes is your favorite and which one you think is the best. And if you guys did enjoy, as always, please hit the like button and subscribe. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you guys for watching. That's it for today, though. Where I'm like out. Peace, lads.